हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई त्रिप्ति टीचर वेलकम यू टू द हिस्ट्री क्लास आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू हिस्ट्री लेसन नंबर टू हिस्टोग्राफी इंडियन ट्रेडिशन इन द लास्ट चैप्टर यू ऑल स्टडीड अबाउट द वेस्टर्न ट्रेडिशन ऑफ हिस्टोरियोग्राफी इन दिस चैप्टर वी विल नो about the tradition of our indian historiography but before that we will revise a bit in the last chapter you all studied about what is historiography tell me students do you remember yes the writing of critical historical narratives is known as historiography the detailed critical study of history is known as historiography and scholars who write such narratives are our historians right so you all studied about what is historiography in it in this chapter we are going to study two main units the those are tradition of indian historiography and indian historiography various ideological frames in this first video you are going to study about indian historiography so let's start with the lesson this we are going to study three main points historiography in the ancient period that is approximately 1st century onwards then we have the historiography in the medieval period that is the 11th century onwards and we have the historiography in the modern period that is 20th century onwards so let's begin histography in the ancient period in this period in india memories of great deeds of ancestors and mythological lore also memories of social transitions were preserved with the help of oral recitals now oral recitals means poem stories so stories were been told of each king or to each other next the inscriptions on the harappan seals inscription means what something that is written or engraved on a monument or a wall or stones or in the book so the inscriptions on the harappan seals and other artifacts confirm that indians had mastered the art of writing as early as the 3rd millennium bce means here they say that indian already knew the art of writing right from the 3rd millennium bce bce means before common era bce means what before common era or perhaps before that however the harappan script is not yet successfully deciphered the earliest known his written documents of historical nature found in india are in the form of inscriptions they are dated to the 3rd century bc that is emperor ashoka maurya time his dis his edits edits are inscribed on the natural rock and stone pillars now edits you know what are edits edits are the official proclamation issued by a person in authority like the king so now this edicts of ashoka king ashoka look at the picture there on the screen 
so these are inscripted on the pillars see like this pillars are there you can see the pillars there king ashoka and the pillars there now these edits the edits of ashoka are a collection of more than 30 inscriptions on the pillars as well as the caves walls who reign from 268 BCE to 232 BCE he used the expression of dhama lipi the writing you can see the writing there the writing on that wall is known as the dhama lipi the style of writing is known as the dhama lipi this writing which can see on the pillar is known as the dhama lipi so here we can this these are known as the edicts that are written about king ashoka on the walls on the pillars further his edicts are inscribed on the natural wall rocks and stone pillars from the 1st century ce that is common era inscriptions began to occur on coins metal images and sculptures and also on the copper plates they provide important historical information we get to know about the dates of various kings dynastic genealogies territorial extents and administrations of various empires and kingdoms and also important political events social organization climate for mines etc of the respective times so on these inscriptions everything was written in their style of writing the ancient literature including epics like ramayana and mahabharata puranas then jain and buddhist text historical accounts by indian authors and also travel logs by the foreign travelers are important source of history here we have on the screen the inscriptions on the harappan seals when harappa civilization was excavated discovered the people found the excavators found these seals and you all can see something is written on it so this reveals their history see here on the copper coin something is written so in their writing of style it they are describing their history here we have more coins on the screen so these are the harappan seals and harappan coins next we can see the stone and the metal inscriptions see in this way people used to write their stories or inscript inscriptions carve on the stones they used to carve the pictures of whatever life they are living on the stones on the walls see all can see metal inscriptions there and coin also then next on page number 7 we can see the soha gaura copper plate so when the copper was discovered people started using metals to do the inscriptions to write on it so i will read about the soha gaura copper plate the copper plate was found at soha gaura it's a district at gorakhpur uttar pradesh it is supposed to be from the mauryan period the inscription on it is in the brahmi script so this script is known as brahmi script and ashoka script was known as the dhami lipi but this is known as 
Brahmi script. The symbols known as tree in railings and mountain at the beginning of the inscription also occurs on the punch marked coins. Another symbol which looks like a structure erected on four wall, four pillars is supposed to be indicative of a granary. You all can see that there is a roof with four pillars. That is their granary where they used to store grains. The inscriptions records a royal order that the grains stored in the granary should be distributed carefully. It is supposed to be suggestive of precautions taken in the time of famines. So this is about the Sohagaura copper plate. You can read the whole information on page number 7. So next is about the epics and the biographies of the king and queen. We come to know about our history through these epics written by our great kings and scholars. The ancient Indian literature including epic Ramayana, and Mahabharata, Puranas, Jain and Buddhist text, historical accounts by Indian authors and also travelogues by the foreign travelers are important source of history. So we came to know about the mythological stories from these Ramayana, Mahabharata and great epics like that and we came to know about all the kings from the biographies, autobiographies or the stories written about these great king and the queens. The writings of the biographies of the king and dynastic dynastic histo histories mark an important step in the Indian historiography. Harsh Charitra written in the 7th century CE by Banabhatta is King Harsha's biography. It portrays a realistic picture of social, economic, political, religious and cultural life during the king's time. So here we have the picture of the great Sanskrit scholar Banabhatta. He has written the Charitra of King Harsha. Next we have the historiography in the medieval period. Now you all can see two pictures of Kalhana Rajatarangini. Rajatarangini is a style of writing, an improved style of writing. The style of writing that is Rajatarangini, the history of Kashmir by Kalhana in the 12th century. Now we have reached in the 12th century that is the medieval period is quite close to the concept of the modern historiography. Kalhana himself says that he wrote this text after critically examining various sources like inscriptions, coins, remains of the ancient monuments, dynastics, dynastic records and the local transitions. So King Kalhana, he wrote about all the Kashmir's history or the history related to that Kalhana period after examining all the inscriptions, whatever is in, was inscripted on the walls and all. He studied them very carefully and then he wrote about it. Raj Tarangini style of writing on these monuments also you will find various writings. Next in the medieval India the historians in the court of Muslim rulers were influenced by Arabic and Persian historiography. Among them Zaiduddin Barani holds an important place 
in Tariq He Firuz Shahi, a book written by him. He has stated the purpose of historiography. According to him, the historian's duty is not limited only to the recording of the ruler's valor and policies of welfare, but he should also write about the ruler's failings and his incorrect policies. So, critical examining means not only writing everything good. Critically means from every point of view it has to be studied about his success and also about his failures there. Barani further says that a historian should also take into consideration the impact of the teachings of the wise, the learned and the saints on the cultural life of people. Thus, Barani expanded the scope of historiography. So, he was a very good thinker and this is his book that he has written, Tari Ke Firoz Shahi. Next, we have the Mughal Empire, the Mughal Empire, Babo, the founder of the Mughal Empire, wrote an autobiography entitled Tuzuke Babri. And in this Tuzuke Babri, it contained the description of the battles fought by him. Babur also recorded his minute observations of various regions and cities travelled by him, including the local economy, customs and the flora. So here we have, we came to know about the history of the Mughal Empire from the writings of such kings. Then, next we are going to study about the Bakhar. Now, Bakhar. Bakhars are very important type of historical documents of the medieval times. It contains the elegies of the heroes and stories of historical events, battles, lives of great men. Next, in the Bakhar, what is there? Bakhar can be divided into various types such as biographies of the kings, dynastic history, descriptions of the events, history of a sect, mythologies and state administrations, story about that, then various kings' autobiographies, then further they have grievances or based on mythological and the administrations by the king. So, these are the Bakhar. Bakhar are the whole historical documents specially written in the medieval period. Here we have the Bakhar of Bhau Saibanchi Bakhar. Now, Bhau Saibanchi Bakhar describes the battle of Panipat. Another Bakhar is Panipatchi Bakhar. That is also there. With the same event. Then we have the picture of how the Bakar is written from inside. Next we have Holkaranchi Kaifiat. It provides the information about Holkas and the contribution to the Maratha rule. So all about the Holkar, how they were, how which battles they fought. About all details are written in this Kaifiat, Hulkaranchi Kaifiat. Then we have very important Sabasad Bakhar. Sabhasad Bakhar was written by Krishnaji Ant. Sorry, it is Krishnaji Anant. Sabasad during the reign of Chhatrapati Rajaram Maharaj. 
and this sabasad bakhar is an important bakhar for getting information about the rule of our great chhatrapati shivaji maharaj so these are the bakhar bakhar are very important from these bakhars we come to know the detail history of our great king and queens so this was all about the medieval period next we are going to study the historiography in the modern period now modern period comprises of what in the 20th century the indian archaeological exploration and research started under the british rule so when britishers came a modern period started the number of ancient sites were excavated under the supervision of sir alexander cunningham so this picture is of sir alexander and he was the first director general of the archaeological survey of india he chose mainly the sites mentioned in the buddhist text for this purpose for the excavations and archaeological survey harappan civilization was discovered by sir john marshall because of this discovery the antiquity of indian history could be stressed to third millennium bce or even earlier than that so because of these two people the excavation that was done or the archaeological survey that was done we came to know about a harappan civilization many british officials in india wrote about a indian history their writings display strong influence on the colonial policies of the british you all know british has set up many colonies yo three volumes of the history of british india written by james mill were published in 1817 so james mill he had written three volumes about the history of british india this was the first book on indian history written by a british historian so he was a british historian and he wrote about our history that is our indian history it clearly reflects an absence of objective perspective and prejudice about various aspects of indian culture but many things were missing in his stories next we have the history of india again written by mount start elfiston he was the governor of bombay and this book was published in 1841 so the british historians used to come here visit india and they used to write about india and these are the books that they have written next we have again some indian history written by the british historian the period of maratha empire is very important in the indian history grand duff name stands out among the british officers who wrote about maratha history yes he was the one who wrote about the maratha history and the book entitled was a history of marathas 
he wrote three volumes of this book grand duff's writing also shows the writing was the british inclination of condemn condemn indian culture and history similarly tendency is witnessed in the colonel todd's writing about rajasthan's history now J- colonel james todd even he wrote about the history of rajasthan but here also many good things were missing about our culture they only wrote from the point of view of the britishers so their writings were not up to the mark our historians were not satisfied with their writings many facts were missing in the in the writing of these historians next we have wilson hunter even he has written on the indian history and it shows about the impartial treatment given by the britishers so here we have this wilson hunter then nilkantha janardhan kirtane and vishwas vishwanath kanish kashkashinath rajwade sorry it's vishwanath kashinath rajwade here i have the picture of vishwanath kashinath rajwade these two people were the indian historians who took upon the task of exposing the limitations of grand duff's writing so vishwanath kashinath rajwade decided that i will explore more expose the limitation of whatever grand duff has written about the maratha emp- maratha empire writing he said that i will bring the truth out so till now we saw histography in the ancient period first century onwards in the ancient period the inscription on stones walls coins seals etc helped us to know about the history of that period historiography in the medieval period 11th century onwards in the medieval period the books written by kalhana zaiduddin barani mughal empire babo akbar nama by abul fazl different bakhars sabasad panipat and holkars were which revealed the stories of kings and queens then we studied about historiography in the modern period that is the 20th century onwards in the 20th century many british officials like james mill mount start elfiston grand duff colonel todd will william wilson hunter wrote and studied about the indian history i hope you understood this part of the lesson in the next video i will be send you sending you the remaining part and i will be sending you a activity you have to read the activity from the textbook and do it in your history notebook itself thank you